We buy a new house, you figure you buy a new house, not an apartment. Wow, so much for insulation. It sounded like an apartment. It was just, you, know, you could hear the nine neighbors next door. They had to close their bathroom to keep the breeze from coming into the bedroom. Do you believe that? They didn't fix it. They just stuck something there to make it go away. Okay, did you get that? Yeah, we got about uh, 47 to uh, 49. Sometimes we even hit 50. As soon as we heard the sounds, uh, it was over for us. Oh, yeah, baby. Mike Holmes. On the money. When we first moved in, we were gonna stay for five, ten years because we really loved the house. But the neighbors actually moved in maybe a month or so after we About moved in, so, yeah. and. I can just remember when they started moving in, my heart just sank. I couldn't believe that I just bought a house and I could hear them so clearly. Well, normally you're used to seeing me taking things apart, it's being done wrong, built wrong. But let me tell you, one of the biggest complaints is sound. Here we have a wonderful new subdivision, a lot of adjoining homes. The complaint is, I can hear my neighbor. I can hear them talking. I can hear them playing their music. I can hear the TV. I can hear them in their bedroom. Nobody was making the excess noise or anything. He was just talking. And uh, when we heard that, uh, it, it's sort of, you know, I, I was shocked. Just that night, in fact, we were talking about, you know, when are we going to move out? Like, that's how disappointing we were. What I'm here for is minimum code requirement. And, and, you know, I keep talking about it day in and day out that minimum code is not good enough. And if you do buy a brand new home that's adjoined to another home, what are your options? Sylvie, nice to see you again. Guy, hey, nice to see you. you. This is a nice place. I like seeing no cracks in the grout or the tiles here. This is looking good. I like the layout. We have talked to the neighbors and they've told us that they can they can hear us and they can actually tell what type of music is on when we play it. Yeah, I, I definitely hear things. I, I hear uh, mostly in my bedroom and uh, in the kitchen. This is the joining wall? Yes, yeah. it is. Okay. Is it up to the builder to make sure that it's soundproof? No. I don't see installation, but I do see something over there. It's up to the builder to make sure that it's minimum code requirement. Way in the corner there, I'm seeing a little bit of installation. Interesting. At a minimum code of 50 on the STC scale, it's supposed to be acceptable that you can barely hear your neighbor. Odds are you're still going to hear your neighbor if they raise their voice, they turn up the stereo, they get into an argument, they put a nail in the wall. You're going to hear it. Normally when you have an adjoining house like this, we'll have a 2x6 bottom plate, 2x6 top plate, stagger the studs, come in with insulation, it's supposed to do a sound break. As soon as there's a stoppage, in other words, I put my hands together like this, sound will travel from one side to the other. But as soon as I separate them, sound dissipates. A fire break would be considered the drywall. This appears to be a 5 8 drywall, which I think it is, and on the other side should be a 5 8 In some places, they'll have two layers on on one side and one on the other, and that will give you uh, a fire rating that is, well, one hour. Minimum code requirement says as long as we have one hour burning time, that should be sufficient. Let's think about that for a second. If you have a fire, that within eight minutes the fire department is at your site with the hoses out putting out the fire. Odds are this is true. But what happens if there's a quiet fire? In other words, no one's home, nobody knows about it. There's a fire next door. It may take an hour before somebody sees it. Sounds hollow, doesn't it? Sylvie was painting, and she could hear Sylvie painting with the roller going over the wall in the bedroom. And I could hear this roller blush going up and down and up and down. Their bedrooms are right next to our bedroom. And just the roller going up and down, she could hear that. Have you talked to the builder? No. We haven't told the builder about the soundproofing at all. Um, reason being is because of how I saw how they handled the ensuite part. There's a lot of air coming through here at one point. Okay. So what they've done is actually stick insulation and if you put your finger in there, you can feel it. I'm not in construction, I'm not a builder, but I know that's not the way to do it. Yes, I do. So they pulled the kick down and they put up uh, some bad yeah. insulation. So you find it really cold. Is, it, is the floor cold? Yes. Do you have heated very, floor in here? Very, no. It's very cold and if you would have held a piece of paper where the air was coming in, it would have moved. You don't find it anywhere else, just in here? A bit in the bedroom, but mostly in here. Especially in the bathroom, for sure. Yeah, I just don't have patience for things done half ass. you know, I, I don't. The bad news is, is obviously we have a sound issue, and in order to address and fix this, you're going to have to remove your island. All your furniture is going to have to come out. We're going to have to tent off the lower, and every wall that joins to your neighbor is going to have to be opened up and inspected, and we're going to find out why. I, I'm looking forward to it being resolved. Uh, I, it's nice knowing that um, when it's resolved, I'll be able to have a conversation and I'll be able to play music. The kids will be able to run as much as they want without, um, or scream as much as they want, without worrying that I'm disturbing anyone. So we'll do a test from this side to the other side to determine how much, I guess, decibels we have in sound. Does it meet minimum code requirement? Does it exceed it? I'm kind of hoping, but I, odds are it does not. We thought that we bought a quality house 
So it's it's it was disappointing. We'll also investigate as to why it's cold in your bedroom and why it's cold in your bathroom, mainly your bathroom. Odds are it's the roof peak out front because there's no brick there. We have a cool breeze coming in. It's relying on the bat insulation and the vapor barrier to stop airflow. I think I could have cried for hours because it, it's such a big investment and you just wonder if something so important is not done correctly. It makes you think what else what else will happen? We're going to take this place apart, okay? Oh it's all worth it. I'll bring it back. I'll show Thank you what I much. found, and we'll take it from there. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, you have a good day. Keep smiling. Do it right and charge it in your house. People will pay. We have the quietest neighbors, but you can still hear the, the steps, the talking, the kids. This is the other side of the house. So I set up a Brian and Adam's work radio, and I thought what we could do is test the uh, sound off the radio. Right. And then I'll walk through this side. I'll talk to you on my phone, and you okay. stand on the other side, and we'll find out just the sound that uh, is stopped in between the houses okay. here, how much. Do you All need right. to be in front of it? or? Uh, no, actually, what I'll do is I'll just stand by the wall here. I'll hold it up. Perhaps you can get a shot of it. And this is a decibel meter, okay. and it'll just register the amount of sound that's uh, that's happening as a result of... Uh, okay, now I, I, I've set this for full blast. All right. Okay, so... Let's... Okay, that's uh, probably enough. What'd you get? Yeah, we got between about 84 and 86. I think it averaged out around 85, something like that. Okay, and that's picking up my voice. So as I'm talking, we're in the area of 70, 69. That's correct. This will tell us how much sound that the wall is not absorbing right. or, or taking over. This is supposed to be a minimum 50 STCs? That's correct. Well, let's see what we have. Okay. STC okay. stands for so, sound transmission right. class. In other words, how much sound the wall will absorb, where decibels is the measurement of sound that we hear. Okay, I've got a receptacle here. Okay, Mike, I'm ready for it. Because I'm probably louder than that with my voice. Yeah, Mike. Uh, no, you couldn't see anything registered here at all. And that's uh, probably as a result of maybe a little extra insulation inside the walls here. Okay, let's go to the master bedroom then. Even though we're above code in STCs, in other words, sound in between the two houses, the problem is, is that there's high frequency and low frequency. With the high frequency, we have eliminated that. The low frequency is the bass or the boom that from people walking. That would take a lot more money to fix that. Okay, did you pick it up? Again, the high frequencies are gone, but the low frequencies remain. Interesting. Go ahead. Yeah, I'm almost there. Okay, I'm here, Mike. Okay, here we go. We're going to do the same thing. Just give it about three seconds, and it'll come on and blare to my ears off. It's not that loud, though. Okay, did you get that? Yeah, we got about uh, 47 to uh, 49. Sometimes we even hit 50. The wall's supposed to be stopping about 46 SDCs. And we had, I believe, about uh, 80 on the other side, 85. So we're shy on what we should be getting for a staggered wall. That's correct. Okay, so we found that it was less upstairs than downstairs. That's correct. Okay, that's curious. So that means either there's insulation missing in the wall downstairs, everything's done correctly upstairs. So I would, I would say it's safe to say that upstairs meets minimum code when downstairs does not. Right, we can deduce that we didn't hear anything upstairs, so with the decibels that you had upstairs, I would agree with you. Now, you heard it. I did. But this didn't pick but up. But this didn't pick it up. Now, why? It, uh, because this is reg registering anything over 40 decibels, and it's the uh, um, the high frequencies that are being attenuated at this point, not the low frequencies. Okay, now this is the drywall you're talking about. This stuff here will be the equivalent of eight layers of drywall. That's correct. When the NRC tested this, that's what their uh, comments were, acoustically speaking. And uh, the trick here is not the actual metal that's inside, but it's the polymer, the viscoelastic polymer that's involved sides of it which actually convert acoustic energy into heat which you can't hear and nor could you feel that if i use this that's correct i'm going to stop really the high frequencies but not necessarily the low frequencies. that's correct the screaming the yelling the phones ringing things of that nature and any kind of bass that happens that's on a low decibel level you'll get rid of that but if you've got a high decibel level of bass where you really crank it to a point of a concert speaker, let's say, um, this is going to be hard-pressed to stop that because this viscoelastic polymer only has so much capacity. Well, I'm actually going to take this wall down because it concerns me as to why am I hearing more here than I am upstairs. So that's that's something I want to personally see. Maybe we'll come up with that. And then, we'll, you know what, let me bring it back after I take this down. All right. So we can do a visual inspection. We can talk about what I see in the floor joists. And we'll take it from there. Sounds great. Man, thank you. You're very welcome. And i got to get one of these. I can tell my kids, you're, you're loud. I'm always loud. I'm yeah, you're loud. Quiet. <laughs> can you stick your hand in there? Is there anything stopping it? You see what I'm looking at? Yeah. No, the insulin, so the insulation serves no purpose then, really, because it, the air is getting in behind it. Cover this up. Pull this cabinet in. Cover this up. 
I'm gonna pull down that light, pull this down, and away we go. So what I need to see is how they're tied into the house there. The bedroom is directly above us. Yeah. So we're gonna cut a two foot channel right across there and a two foot right across the front of the house. It allows me at the front of the house to look up into that small little attic they have in the front to see how they've insulated this wall or see if we have any cold drafts because I have a funny feeling we're bringing an Alex on this one. Do some spray filming? Yeah. This will be an easy job, but it depends on how far I have to go into here. Now, they were saying the floor was warm. However, the front's cold. So just an inspection on this side and the front will tell me how they've done up here. It might be just as simple to get up with right in the front there with Alex to spray the front of the house. What they're trying to do is create a warm zone. So the vapor barrier, you can see they snapped it on here. They've come up right across. I mean, think about the insulation. I can't believe they're not colder up there. That whole front, there's got to be a wall going up the front. The wind is billowing this plastic. You know where that's coming from. That's why it's cold in the front. Yeah. <sighs> Man. Drop the whole ceiling. Okay. Disconnect the sink. I need this out. Okay. And then we're going to pull the countertop. We're going to leave the uh, island where it is. We'll cover it up. You see, Dan, he leaned on the bottom of a cupboard once and it all fell apart because he's on a, he should be on a dive, but he broke it. So I'm trying to give him some room. But he didn't hear me say that. Just keep it protected. I removed the doors for you, Dan, so you didn't like. Can you wait? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> You know, that's depressing. There was no insulation here. There's also no insulation here. Pull the wall down. Ah! Well, that's their wall right there. Oh, wait a minute. We have a double wall. This is again showing me that the builder cares about what they're doing. They did a double studded wall rather than a two by six bottom plate and top plate and staggered studding. When I'm visually looking through the hole, I can see the distance in the back. This would equal a two by six distance. Right away, I'm thinking they did staggered studding which they can do. But in this case, because it's a double wall, and I remember now one of the neighbors saying to me that my neighbor got insulation, but I didn't. And minimum code here was as long as one of them is insulated, the other one doesn't have to be. Okay, so that's a good sign. We see that they have insulated on the other side. I can see it over there. I'm no longer going to harm their side. That's where the sound came from. So I'm gonna take this piece, we're gonna plaster it back in place. There's the next door neighbor right there. On the other side of this, you're gonna see the same thing we saw here. Remember, we also saw, and I can see insulation in there. So that's good. Good thing is, we have a double wall. We have drywall in between, so fire rating is good. We have insulation on this side. For some strange reason, they ran out of uh, drywall and decided to insulate this area. This would now explain why we can hear the music so loud on downstairs in the kitchen and not upstairs in the bedroom. Oh. All right, now that we have all the drywall down, this is what we call minimum code requirement. What they're going to do, and it's, again, I'm gonna say this, they bring in the framers, they frame the ceiling down low, they put in a nice, what is this, probably an R30 insulation. Look at these pieces. First of all, cold goes that way through this like a baffle. It's supposed to be this way. This should have been a continuous piece, but the reason they did this was so it didn't fall out on them. They just stuffed it up and then drywalled it. We see the plastic on the warm side, and how we see it is they came up from the wall, I can see it there, they drape across the top, they come down, they tie into the side of this two by four, so there's no tape, there's nothing around here to stop air movement in here. Anytime there's a cold zone, such as a garage or a front porch or anything like that that has a, a room above, it should be spray foam. Spray foam's 100%. It's gonna seal it, it's gonna keep it warm. Cost factor, we know that spray foam is three to four times more cost than bat and vapor barrier, okay? Problem being, they bring in a contractor or a carpenter that frames all of this, then we bring in the insulation crew that puts up the insulation, has a hell of a time getting that plastic up there, because think about it, this is all built first, that's why they made the plastic come across and tie into the center two by four. Spray foam the top, and don't build all this. So which one's cheaper? Look at that, eh? So the day they catch on to this and brag about it, hey, we spray foam it, your, war your rooms are gonna be warm. That's what I wanna hear. My bedroom's warm, my bathroom's warm. So to the builders out there, a fine builder here, add two more formulas to his project, spray foam and soundproof drywall okay we're talking sound this drywall here right that you see in this in this room is the equivalent one sheet to eight sheets of drywall if that doesn't give you sound i don't know what does oh let's maybe beef it up a bit with some sound barrier dry uh, uh insulation bad insulation in the wall like a proper safe and sound insulation serves two purposes one sound two fire that's a neighbor i don't want to hear them and i don't want their house on fire setting my house on fire makes sense to me look what i see in the corner there see the ductwork 
The ductwork travels up this wall right here. That will supply. That crosses over. Oh, you... I'm hoping it's not air, uh, like a heated line above this, trying to because it's against code to run a hot line in here and keep this floor warm. I'm starting to think they did. I do see the ductwork, whether or not that runs to the front for the uh, windows, but it's not insulated. You really do get what you pay for. You buy a beautiful home, they hear their neighbors. A couple more dollars, you won't hear your neighbors. Put your money in the right place. As long as we build minimum code, it's never going to work properly. Here I am, brand new home, taking this down. Come on in. Let me show you what I found. Oh, we sort of made a mess of your place. It's all good. Well, we did cover everything up, believe it or not. We've actually protected your floors right through your stairs. We haven't really gone upstairs yet for anything, but I'll explain that in a minute. Let's walk through. In your living room, we laid down not only drop cloths, but carpet. We make sure we walk on the carpet. I will not scratch your floor. I will kick everybody's butt if this floor is scratched. <laughs> they know the rule. Everything gets covered. Your cabinets, your curtains, your couch, everything is covered. Obviously, you have a new sink location. I see that. So if you wanted to do your dishes, you're going to have to hook up a pump and a drain this. <laughs> now, it's amazing what gets covered up in my world. Okay? No way. Everything looks beautiful, doesn't it? Great drywall, great paint, yeah, great plaster. Good. Yeah. Crap wood. So crappy that look at this wonderful piece of hockey. Oh my god. I thought it was the uh, uh, staggered study. Remember I said yeah. it's two by six on the bottom and the top? It's That's not. Right. It's actually a double wall. So we have one wall on one side, yeah. one wall on this side. Minimum code requirement in this area states that as long as one wall is insulated, you're fine. As we were upstairs, I was on the other side of the house, and my sound guy was on this side. I walked around with a radio that wasn't that great. I could actually yell louder than the radio. We picked it up very good in here. As a matter of fact, it failed on minimum sound code in the house, in the kitchen. Now, here's the insulation I saw through that hole. Why do you think we had two pieces of insulation vertical there? That was a door before. They used to go in and out from between houses. That's exactly what it was. Yeah. Now, they were supposed to drywall over that. Because now it no longer meets a fire rating. It doesn't meet a sound rating, oh, which yeah. is why it failed downstairs. Right I will pull this insulation out. I will drywall in behind this. I will replace all the crap studs that are in this neighborhood. Redrywall it with our sound drywall at 10 times the cost. However, it's the equivalent of eight layers of drywall. We took pictures while the house was being built, so I think it'll be interesting to look back now that... We see some of the stuff. Even if we did see it, we thought it maybe it was just there for a bit. Remember that little cold breeze we had in the bathroom upstairs? Yes. Yeah. Come on. I decided I wanted to see how they did their sound and fire rating within the ceiling up here. So I started by cutting a two-foot path right across this end, which showed me how they insulated things, in which I didn't like at all. So as you can tell, I dropped the whole ceiling. Now, this is what builders are getting away with. This is an absolute no-no. We have a hot hairline coming in, okay? And that's why your floor felt warm upstairs, but the front wall was cold, right. which I'll explain in a minute. The first time I've ever seen them run a return. This is not allowed. And the reason it's not allowed is you have your car in here and the, and the car is running and you get the emissions off your car, the gases you don't want to breathe in, and it can escape upstairs. That air return will pull it right through the house and anybody in the house is now, right. you might as well sit in the car and put your you know, hose from the muffler right yeah. through the window. So we're gonna cap both those lines. I'm gonna bring in my spray foam guy. We're gonna spray foam all your flooring. You know what, I have a friend that uh, it's, uh, he was showing me, like, we bought the house basically at the same time. He lives here as well, just about three blocks from here. And uh, they sprayed his whole garage. And he said, oh, they must have done that as you to yours as well. Everything to do with all the outside perimeters, we're gonna block this 100%, so A, no gas fumes can come in the house. B, we're gonna make it warm. Now you wanna know why your bathroom is so cold? Yes. In this corner, that's your bathroom cabinet right there. You see that piece of drywall? Oh, yeah. That's where your bathroom cabinet is. You see that block at the end there? You just stand right in the corner there. You see that block in the corner? Yeah. yeah. Now that is one hell of a cold zone up here. Why? Because oh, yeah. that's your little roof on the outside, right? That's yes. right. Freezing cold, air coming in, oh, making it ridiculous. Do you yeah. see the garage wide open like that with no foam uh, right from their bathroom? You wouldn't believe that's the amazing. draft when I, put, when I put my hand up there. Yeah. And oh, it's just getting right in your house. So you're going to be a little cold tonight. So yeah. you might have to turn the heat up just a bit. I mean, to see the end result of why we feel this cold air coming out in the bedroom and the, and the ensuite, it's unbelievable. It's wide open in there. The builder's way of fixing it was to put insulation under the cabinet. So Which they've done, right? Which but they've done. It, uh, it didn't change the problem, obviously. Like, I knew that something else, I'm not in the business, and I knew that wouldn't, something had to be, you know, it had to be a bigger problem, so. And the band-aid wasn't big enough to cover that, though. That, that hole there. And if you want, since this isn't Taj Mahal kitchen or, or you know what you're used to seeing on the show, that normally I'm saying, don't look, wait till it's done. You can come in and take a look tomorrow, see what we've done and why not. As a matter of fact, I'm going to encourage you to take some pictures. Okay, okay. take pictures tonight. Good. Take pictures tomorrow. And this way, if you ever sell the house, you can show the next buyer this is what we did. Yes. That's what I see right down, and that's just perfect. That's what I want to see a nice wall. Look at this piece of lumber. You believe they actually use this? Look at this. I could use this as a hockey stick. 
it's that corner we want, right? We want to hit that whole yeah, corner. That whole corner right here. And see you, see, you see that little, right in the corner there, you see that gap? Like yeah. you're saying, the bathroom's freezing, so it makes total sense to me. Once I open it, that's the bathroom right there. Yep. We're straight up the wall. We're going to seal off the bathroom right there on top of the drywall. Right there. We're going to start right there, go right up to the roof line. And then we're going to spread the backside of this concrete wall right to the end. And we're going to envelope this steel beam. Okay. Right the backside here, back up the wall. So basically, we're going to provide a thermal break all the way around that beam. And then we're going to come right across the ceiling here. Will this give us somewhat of a soundproof if you hit that area across there? Yes. The first, first way sound travels is going to be through open spaces. And there's definitely a bunch of cracks there where the sound can travel through. So the spray foam will deaden that a little bit. So you don't mind hitting above the 2x4 there in that hole? No problem. What we do is an air seal right there. Like that, that'll do uh, the most spray foam will do. Excellent. Okay. And obviously, we have the same issue on the front porch where I've dropped the soffit. And we just need you to butter that wall around so we can set, help protect the bathroom from it getting cold. Yeah, actually, we're more than butter. We're going to spray it fairly thick on there. Excellent. Yeah, we're going to probably two inches of foam at least there. Okay. This is a sound wrap. And what this does is, is because this box is on that side, and it's going to allow sound to travel through the wall. We're going to eliminate that right now. Since it's open and I can get to it, I might as well. This will stick to all surfaces, seals right around the wire. It's almost like uh, putty. And now what we've done is deadened all sound that can travel through that box. We're gonna add, instead of the pink gate insulation that we saw, we're gonna add the safe and sound product. So now we have two in one. We have one for sound, two for fire. This must be minimum code requirement when it comes in between two houses. But it's not, because one layer of drywall on this side, one layer of drywall on the neighbor's side, it gives you one hour burning time, minimum code requirement. I believe you can screw through that and there's like metal in the middle. That's pretty cool. We know we've made the repairs on this area. We did use a piece of quiet rock. It was not necessary, but we had it, so why not use it? Now, let's understand the structure for a second. This wall here is a load-bearing wall, which continues right up. This is an adjoining house. This wall is also a load-bearing wall. So picture two studded walls that go directly up, and now instead of overlaying our floor joists and tying in over the load-bearing wall, We've separated this, and what we do by doing that is stopping the floor joist so that we have that space in between. We need that dead air space, which you see across here, which now when sound will travel through the drywall, hit the stud, now dissipates in between the two areas because it's got nowhere to go. Very important. You know one thing, you gotta know the next to do it all right. You do one thing wrong, we have a sound issue, and someone's gonna scream. What did you get? This is from Sylvie. Good morning, Mike. Could you please take pictures of your work today? Thank you. Because remember I told you, I said, you know, I want you to take pictures for resale purposes. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they're not going to be here, so. so we're going to take a couple pictures. Absolutely. You can say cheese if you want. Cheese and gravy. The sound okay, upstairs okay. is passed by a minimum cold requirement, but since we're here, we're going to have the quiet rock directly over the drywall, make sure that we do sound fixing around all receptacles, etc. The idea is, is that quiet rock is the equivalent to eight layers of drywall. So in essence, it's now nine. We cut a much bigger hole, okay? We pull it out, we wrap the box, we stuff the area with insulation because it is a box there. Why not back it up? Put back in the piece, cock around it, do the same for each and every hole. So whatever we open up as, as an area, we'll get as much insulation as we can. We, and still make sure that we have that uh, airspace in behind the wall, mm -hmm. but fill the void behind the box. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense? Yeah. Makes sense. Sure Perfect. Okay, so you're going to work with me and we'll uh, we'll do these these walls, knock them off. Give me a timeline. How, how fast do you think we can do it? Go. An hour. An hour. That's what I want here. Yeah. Tell you five inches, not like half inch, eh? No. Just giving myself a nailing edge so we can put our pieces that we cut back in place. This secures it. At the same time, we're going to add some sound cocking. I'm quite confident it will actually adhere. It's almost like an adhesion as well. This is a little more expensive product, so we definitely just want to use it for the sound bases. We will use some PL Premium right across the stud lines before we screw. So not only do we screw the studs with uh, two-inch screws, we also make sure we have adhesion. So in the future, there's never an issue whatsoever. I never recommend is to cover up anything, but in this case, we're going to cover it up with soundboard. Hard to believe putting drywall over drywall is going to make a difference, but this is not normal drywall. about 
putting any seal on this because when you go through, there's polymer inside the drywall that'll coat the screw as it goes through. So it'll lock everything so it'll in. lock everything in. You right. don't have to worry about hanging a picture or anything like that because it'll do the same thing to the nail. So you can, it's just like normal drywall when it's done. Nice easy one for you today. I just need you to get the soffit back up. Obviously, you see that we've spray foamed it. Yep. And uh, I noticed when I dropped the ceiling in the garage that the flashing on the top up here, there is no caulking. And I know that's supposed to tie into the mortar, and it does not. Right. So you do me a favor and throw up a little yep. bit of caulking. Yeah, no Maybe problem. take a look at everything on this side here if you can while you're up there. Yep, we'll do. This joint here is fine. I think the daylight you're seeing was kind of through this seam of the, the redwood flashing. Okay. So I'm just going to put a screw in that, tighten it up. We've noticed some cracking and some wear here in the mortar. It's pretty soft and sandy. So we're going to caulk that and seal that up. Excellent. That's all bad. I'll get you some caulking. The mortar in between these two pieces of stone has cracked and it's loose. So I'm just getting rid of all the loose debris and we're going to put some caulking in there to fill it. Because what can happen here, the water hitting this sill can seep down in here, get behind the brick, possibly get out the sheathing, which is uh, something we don't need. So we're just going to touch up this joint here and the next joint over because it's pretty cracked. The mortar seems a little uh, sandy, so I think it's quite the right mix for this. Because we removed the 5 eighths and put up new 5 eighths, everything should fit back perfectly without, without an issue at all. Thank you. This job here isn't about what we see. I mean, obviously, we're going to put it back together identical. You know, even if we even got the same paint, the same color. So visually, you're not going to see a thing other than the one room and the garage, because we cleaned up the uh, plaster in the garage, we painted it, and obviously changed the color in the one room. We matched everything else, but it's not about what we see, it's about what we hear. And now, it's about what we don't hear. That's the idea. Excellent. With this room, they chose a red, so we're using a tinted primer to develop a deep base, which the red will cover more easily. If you try to put red over top of white, you're looking at five coats sometimes. So this just makes our life much easier. Um, anytime we use a red or a yellow, I like to go with a tinted primer. How are you doing today? Doing great. Glad to see you back. I guess you can tell we've uh, opened this all the way up, pulled down the drywall. We did, it's uh, no surprise as to why we heard more in the kitchen. It was the walkthrough from construction. They never right. did close it up properly. All right. So we did, we pulled down the drywall, we uh, insulated that area, closed it off, and then insulated the whole wall, and then put up the quiet rock. And uh, obviously, it's not look like we've never been here. Well, it looks like you weren't here at all. Yeah, so we're, we're, are we ready to do a sound test again? I think we should be, yeah, absolutely. Hello, Lorraine. Hi, how are you? We finally meet, how are you doing? I'm pretty good. So he'll be next door. Measure. Next door, yeah, he has a DB meter. Okay. And what it does is just picks up the sound. Hey, Ray. Yeah, hi, Mike. You ready? I'm going to turn it on and turn it right up full blast, okay? It's not as loud as you think, so hold on. Okay. How was it? Do you have it on? Can't hear it. Well, it's not reading anything on this side over here, except when I'm talking. So we were good? We were great. And we've done our job. I guess there's no sense of going upstairs because we've already put uh, an SDC of 18 over top of existing. Not only that, we even cut out all the boxes. We made sure we wrapped the boxes and we insulated that zone. Any, anywhere we open up, we insulated as much as we could. And it closed that, sealed that, and then went over top of it uh, with the quiet rock. Just improving perfection upstairs. Now, just so we know, uh, your low reading means it's probably under 20, 30, what? It's under 30. It's uh, under yeah, 30. this is not necessarily used by um, masterers. Uh, it's what we use just basically to get ideas for customers as they uh, try to identify how they would solution it. Sometimes they have the stereo inside versus uh, the bedroom or so forth. So we actually identify you know, what we need in a way of an STC um, residual on the other side. So as far as I'm concerned, we have an STC minimum of a library. We've done our job. On this side, absolutely right. Now, one lesson about plumbing to never over tighten anything always just give it hand tight okay okay now we're gonna go across the bottom this is gonna hold our trap piece down or our uh, tail piece now with plastic you gotta be careful because if you cross thread it you really screw it up right so you make sure you're on it is that easy to crack too if you're over tightening it's plastic now because this is a flex line or plastic polyethylene you want to make sure that they don't move around that's why we got these guys to mount it to the back of the cabinet to hold them nice and secure we're gonna have shutoffs on it you really don't want to be throwing these pipes all around when you're shutting off the water on and off because just something could possibly break, right? Okay. And always, always, always. Clean it. Yep. Always. Every fitting, every joint, every elbow. Get that as tight as possible so it doesn't move. I'm going to maneuver that and set up what we need in copper. See how I come off my line? Yeah. Okay, so that's really why. It's just because it's not set perfectly. Yeah. And why you go one and back. So you stay within that groove. Small tighten. One and back. Okay, nice. Let's see how nice and secure that is now. That holds it. We can reach in. 
All right, and really, I'm ready to solder. So we don't want to be that hot. We're going to turn it down low because we don't want that much heat. This thing gives more heat than a standard torch. Okay. We're going to start from the bottom because heat rises, or hot air rises anyways. We have to sink it a plastic, right? Now, if it's at the right temperature, you see how it slipped out the bottom? Yeah. Normally, you don't have to touch the bottom, but we'll do it for safety. I just want that. Excuse that work? Yeah. Cool off that ball cock. Our compression fitting will come down. Our 3 8 threaded piece will come down and squish that into the pipe and create a nice seal. But for a backup, we want to make sure we use Teflon tape or at least pipe dope and always put it on clockwise because that's the way we're threading it with our 3 8 nut. Once you have it snug tight, leave it and see if she leaks. Because if it doesn't leak, you've done it well. Got it? Got it. All right, you can do the next one. All right. Good job. Thank you. Well, I don't really do much, but good job. <laughs> the last thing that we're doing here is requested by the building inspector, and I'm really happy to hear it. He was a really good inspector. It's, it's nice to see good guys like that, that we must seal around the plate for gases coming through. Even though we did spray foam, we're not obviously spray foamed here, only up in the ceiling area. So I said I would gladly do this. I've never seen it done before. But I'm real happy to hear that he cared enough to make sure that I did it. All it does is just help ensure the gases don't go through the inside of the home. All right. I'm done. I'm going to go get him. Sorry to keep you waiting. Come on in. No problem, no problem. Make sure you take your shoes off. We cleaned up. Yeah. Thank you. See? <laughs> nice. I believe people buy brand new homes, condos, on the point that they don't have to fix things. If it's brand new, it should be perfect. My number one complaint, issue, is sound. In condos, in homes that are adjoining or tied in or are semi-detached, if minimum code states that an STC of 50, which is your sound transmission, is acceptable, and people know this, then okay. Obviously, you know you're not going to see one hell of a difference, really, because we've chosen the same paint. Uh, we took it all down. So, you know what? Honestly, it looks the same. Right? The only difference is we didn't hang your pictures because what I want you to know is that uh, with this quiet rock that we put up, once you put a nail into it, you don't want to pull that nail out. If you do want to change your pictures, just punch the nail in and paint over it. Okay? So just okay. keep that in mind. But obviously, we did take it all down. We took your island out, your dishwasher, your end cabinets, removed all your drywall. We found an opening in the middle that's the crossover. And this is why we had so much sound coming through the kitchen compared to upstairs. So obviously, we uh, closed it off. We made sure that we drywalled that section, soundproofed the whole, whole wall with safe and sound uh, insulation, and then put up the new Quiet Rock. My point is, the builder goes to the extreme of building a half-decent home, a secondary membrane on the foundation without even telling the client. That shows the builder actually cares about selling good homes. Homes. Where did they fall flat? Educating the homeowner. I think it's perfect. I think, I think it's just looking at it, you can't even tell that we've been here. And well, it's, it's painted better, really. You guys did a better job than I did. <laughs> well, we painted the whole that. ceiling. We painted the whole kitchen, actually, the whole thing. And uh, anything we have to touch up, we have to touch up. So let's move upstairs and take a look upstairs. If they want to make more money, and everybody wants to make money, educate the homeowner. Here's how we can make an even better home. Are you willing to pay the price? Now, what I love about this is when we did the sound test up here, we didn't find any, uh, it was actually good. It was at minimum code. So by just retrofitting, in other words, going over top, we had to strip your closet and your bedroom, cover everything up, cut open the walls, uh, wrap the boxes, insulated the area, and then retrofit over top with the new stuff. And you can't even tell, can you? No, no not even. Same, uh, looks the same. It sounds dead in here now. As it's you not. can tell, like, it's a weird, different sound. You noticed it? Yeah. yeah. Homeowners out there don't want to hear their neighbor. They don't want to smell the greasy food cooking next door. And odds are they'll pay an additional 2000 3000 up to five, depending on the soundproofing. And let's talk about air in between the two homes. Now, in the bathroom, did you notice any difference since I've been uh, working on your home? Yes. A uh, big difference, actually. It was, it was cold the past couple of nights, a few days ago, and the floor is the same temperature all throughout the, the washroom. Usually it'd be much, much colder near the cabinet where the window is and, and stuff, and now everything's the same. Knowledge is there. Using power of information to the homeowners as a builder or developer is going to educate them to the point where they now have the choice to spend a little more money in the right place. Now, this is different. <laughs> Beautiful. Do you like it? Oh, oh, man. Look how nice this is. Yeah. Actually, amazing. you know what? It looks really That's nice. Beautiful, I beautiful, do like beautiful. It. I love it. Yeah. Were you nervous at all? No, it's just I, I saw some of the primer, which is a much, much different color. So yeah, should be. this is a big surprise because it's not at all what it was. So um, it's going to be darker. Much, we much darker. As dark as we this is exactly what I wanted and to yeah. see it on the walls is, is nice. I love that red room. I, I've been wanting to paint it. I've been putting it off because it's a dark color. So much work. It looks, I'm, I'm extremely, extremely thrilled. I love it. Mm -hmm. I'll come and do your house. 
You got a deal. <laughs> Let's go see the garage. We do the job. Sure, everything looks good, but it looks the same. The homeowners were thrilled to death that we painted the bedroom upstairs red. Yeah, so I got a smile out of them because what else was I going to get? It isn't about what we see, it's about what we don't hear. That's the difference. We removed your door opener, we removed the ceiling, we removed absolutely everything. And once again, I was extremely frustrated because I see what they always do, the way they insulate the room above the garage. Not only was the vapor barrier not taped, and they don't get away with this, but they ran in a hot line and a cool line. So that's when I brought in Alex. So we sealed up everything, we put it all back together, installed everything, plastered it probably uh, two extra coats. So it was a nice finish. Uh, Even the walls in here, you can tell that you guys did it because uh, it's finished nicer than some of the walls in the house. <laughs> Overall, the experience has been just fantastic. It's been great. Everybody's wonderful. I think I'll miss everybody and, and I'll miss the coffee in the morning. <laughs> don't I'm going to be on my way. All right. Thank Absolute you very much. meeting you. I appreciate and you're going to come to my house and pay me. Yes. Okay. Yes, I will. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you, you for everything. Okay. Thank you. Enjoy it, all right? We're staying put. Yeah, we're staying put. Let's do this quick because I'm in the middle of the road. I'm gonna find out which key it is. Quick, get the cutoff, sir. You got keys? I don't no. have keys, no. No keys. I got nothing. <laughs> I have too many keys. <laughs> and I don't think I have this one. That's not it. I have new locks in the truck anyways. I'm just gonna put all the new ones on. How did you get this off this work? I think oh. actually Adam has this key. Oh, perfect. He's not here. Yeah. <laughs> I found the key. <laughs> oh, you found the key? That's yeah. even funnier. Yeah.